Are you one of the many here in Ireland who are struggling with the rising cost of energy? Are you worried about what this winter will bring? Are you looking at your bills in disbelief as they've gone up yet again, even though you're being more conscious of your usage? Yeah, me too. Unfortunately, I've got some more bad news because guess what? Eamon Ryan has woken up to tell us all about a new tax that we will all have to bear on our energy bills. Yippee! So in case you missed it, our Energy Minister Eamon Ryan has revealed that Ireland will be acquiring a gas storage ship and we'll all have to pay for it. Yep, that's right, we're going to buy a storage ship instead of allowing the building of the LNG terminal that was denied planning permission by onboard Planala. He said that there will be a small charge on our bills to pay for this new boat, while refusing to be drawn on how small is small. He did say that the biggest users will pay the most, but, well, I'll believe that when I see it. The vessel itself will need deep water, will be of considerable tonnage, and will not be cheap, he said. The ship will be expected to have capacity for 12 days supply to the nation, although it will have to be replenished on a rolling basis as it could lose up to half its capacity in a year through evaporation. So why not just give the go-ahead for the LNG terminal? The scalable, higher capacity LNG terminal with a far superior lifespan? Anyone? I know it's a private company looking to build it, but why not allow it with a public stake or share? Now, I've also just quoted Ryan where he said that this ship will not be cheap, right? Yeah, well, the very same article also quotes him as saying that he thinks we can get it at a relatively low cost. Which is it, Eamon? Which is it? Someone, please make it make sense. But again, to pay for all of this, there will be a small charge on gas or electricity bills. This was backed up by Auntie Shuckley over Adker, who said that the storage will be expensive, but that the cost will be spread over a long period of time in the form of a levy on bills. So temporary, just like the USC then. Great. Levy and charge. Just two words that are often used when the government is afraid to call a spade a spade and tell us what it really is. A tax. It's it's a tax. Another bloody tax to do with energy systems that ordinary people have no control over and have no capacity to change. We are bound by the systems set up by those with power and in power, and yet now when we dare to use those systems, we're taxed for the privilege. That doesn't sit right with me. We already have to endure a carbon tax, and now this... At a time when almost one in four households are behind on their gas bills and roughly one in eight are behind on their electricity bills, they're going to add to energy poverty. Electricity and gas prices have doubled in the past two years and the government has done absolutely nothing to stop the price gouging. Instead, they've offered one-off bandages and energy credit here and there instead of actually addressing the root cause of the issues. So here's an idea. Why not implement the windfall tax on the outrageous profits that the energy companies are seeing and use that to pay for the boat? You know, like the energy company that the Irish government has a majority stake in, the one that saw profits surge by 30% during the first half of this year, or ask all those power-hogging data centres, some of whom were undercharged, to pay extra for our hospitality to help cover this cost. You know, instead of asking the taxpayer to foot the bill yet again for more government in ineptitude and poor planning. Now, there was another quote by Eamon Ryan that caught my eye while reading about this nonsense. He said that to reduce reliance on gas imports, we will reduce natural gas demand and develop renewable indigenous gas supply. Firstly, the Greens have blocked paths to an indigenous supply of gas. Secondly, how is he planning on reducing natural gas demand? By pricing it out of reach of ordinary people, is that it? Because that certainly seems like the plan, because we certainly haven't been seeing the benefits of our renewable indigenous wind energy supply on our bills yet, have we? Not a chance. We're still being gouged. Look, I get it. We need to reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. That's been the case for as long as I've been alive. But I can't do anything about that. I'm just one person. I can only use the systems available to me. And you can't phase out fossil fuels when you have nothing to replace them with. And this is where the short-sightedness of the Green Party comes in. 
where's the planning? They were happy with on board Planola's decision about the LNG terminal after all, and indeed are against LNG in general. And yet, here's Eamon Ryan off to buy an LNG storage ship, the purpose of which is to safeguard against international shocks. Well, if that's the case, that Eamon Ryan is indeed worried about Ireland's energy security, why then did he not apply for European Commission funding to help secure energy continuity? And will any journalist actually ask him these questions? Because I for one would love to know the answers. But this is my problem with the Green Party. They want to achieve all of these lofty goals while skipping ahead to the end. They won't put the groundwork in or accept that there needs to be time and adequate funding allocated to achieving these goals. No, they'd rather just set the goal, expect everyone to jump, and when they don't or more likely can't, they bring out the stick in the form of more taxes when an ounce of planning would show that what's needed is more carrots and more time. Taxes really seem to be the only idea the Greens can ever come up with in my view, that and incentives that only benefit the wealthy. Case in point, the grants for electric vehicles. It's well known that the Greens want to see the back of gas guzzlers, and yet they went ahead and cut the grants offered to buyers of electric vehicles. Now, let's park the discussion about whether electric vehicles are as eco-friendly as they appear and simply talk about the grants. Why cut them? If electric vehicles are as important as the Green Party say they are, why not increase the grants instead of cutting them to benefit even more people? Eamon Ryan gave some wishy-washy reasoning about investing in the infrastructure instead, but why not both? Switching to an electric vehicle is simply a cost that many families and households cannot bear, so why reduce the incentives? The cuts have already caused a drop in demand for the EVs, so why not reverse and increase them? Instead, we have seen carbon tax go up, which increases the cost of diesel and petrol for those who can't afford an electric vehicle. Then we have the grants for retrofitting your home. Even the former minister who introduced the grants, Dennis Nocton, had to abandon his plans to retrofit his own home under the scheme as the requirements were too rigid and the costs too high. The upfront costs are far too high for most homeowners. And so, the grants are useless. Can you see a pattern here? The grants are only useful to those who can bear upfront costs, or in other words, the wealthy, those who don't need them. If you can afford to buy a new car, great, here's a grant. If you can afford a massive outlay for retrofitting, great, here's a grant. But if you can't afford that, well, here's some more carbon taxes and charges and levies to eat further into your income and make damn sure you will never be able to afford them. Fuck you for being poor is the message, I guess. And that really does seem like the Green Party solution, doesn't it? Stop being poor, only then can we save the world. So when their own ineptitude surrounding energy security results in yet another tax for us all to pay, well, I can see why they're polling at around 3 to 4%, with a margin of error of about 3%. It really is the case that the only people who can be as green as the Green Party want are the wealthy few who can afford it. And even then, it's the wealthy who produce the most greenhouse gases. I guess once you've bought the electric SUV and retrofitted your home to save on energy bills, you can feel good and forget about your carbon footprint and spend the money you saved on things like more foreign holidays. Holidays. Isn't that right, Eamon? Minister, throughout your tenure in government, you've taken many carbon intensive overseas flights on various diplomatic missions to cities around China, to Singapore, and more over the years. But you also tell the public that cheap 10 euro flights for annual holidays are part of what's killing the planet and will soon be a thing of the past. So, if climate change is as big of a threat as you say it is, wouldn't it be more appropriate for you to hold these foreign meetings over Zoom? If you mind, I wouldn't mind just asking very briefly. Just very briefly. Um, we will not make the scale leap we need to make if we're pointing the finger at other people or blaming people. I've consistently said that, that we have to change the system so we move towards a low carbon system everywhere, including in aviation, the development of sustainable aviation fuels, so that it too is part of its transition. But you put an if around climate. I don't think it's an if anymore. I think the Irish people are absolutely clear and certain like everyone else that this is a risk beyond any other. We have an energy security medium short-term risk, but my God, we have a climate risk. It's not an if anymore.
Well, well, I, I was I was only using that as uh, in the context of uh, what what you're telling the public, and then I, I I mean, would you would you agree that at least some people would perceive it as as a kind of hypocrisy? Uh, some some people out there might, might have that. View. I think I asked the question. Now we will move on. If we can. Isn't it just great that not only does he not have to follow his own doctrine, he gets to just answer whatever question he wants to answer and ignore the actual question. And then he wonders why not everyone is buying into climate change policies. Real leaders lead by example and are able to stand by their decisions with integrity. They are able to answer charges of hypocrisy easily. But no, not our Eamon. Oh no. No, it's one rule for himself, quite another for us mere proles, and no self-awareness in sight. So to summarise, no energy security planning until the last moment, with a plan that seems very much in its infancy. Buy a boat for LNG storage. It won't come cheap, but we can get it at a relatively low price, says Ryan, while Veradker undermines him and says we haven't come down definitively on whether there will be floating or fixed gas storage. So no plan. But hey, at least they both agree on one thing. The tax we'll all pay for the privilege. Pay for it equally, I might add, instead of higher taxes for those who cause the most damage and can well afford it. The wealthy. So what do you think of the new plan for our energy security? A stroke of genius from the Greens? Or a lame duck that's dead in the water? Are you happy with even more taxes on our energy bills? Or are you sick to the back teeth of paying even more while the big polluters get richer? How likely are you to vote for your Green Party representative at the local and general elections? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of new content. If you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or a super thanks, which is greatly appreciated. And a huge thank you to those of you who already have. You can also follow me on Twitter. Until next time, Slonga Full.